Elian Cashew, you're a municipal councillor in Chisinau, your deputy leader of your party, which is called our party in point of fact. Can you just in very simple terms explain what is happening in your country and what you are trying to do about it by coming here? Yes, indeed. I'm a municipal councillor rep uh, council representing the opposition to the regime of Vlad Blakotnuk, our party. I had a delegation of local officials representing our party to the Council of Europe. We came uh, with a clear message uh, of uh, conveying from the first source to the Council of Europe uh, official about the political repression of how the regime of Plaho, oligarch Plachotnyuk is using law enforcement institutions or bodies that are politically control to basically repress, uh, harass, uh, and pressure uh, local officials from an opposition party. So that's our mission, is our objective. We came to inform and likewise to see how um, the Council of Europe as an European institution can use their, its tools at hand uh, to try to fix the situation because what the, the repressions against our party and the leader of the party, Renato Sate, basically these repressions violate the fundamental values the Council of Europe stands upon, which is uh, rule of law, human rights and democracy. But what can the Council of Europe do realistically? I mean, Mr. Uh, your, your, your leader, Mr. Osati, he can't take a case to the European Court of Human Rights because that has to be referred by the, the, by the top court in Moldova. So what sort of concrete action do you feel can be taken? <clears throat> we are talking about uh, the usual tools the Council of Europe can apply. Uh, first of all, our concrete reports that, well, for instance, we went to the Congress of Local Authorities and how the repressions applied to our mayors and local councillors violate their char the, uh, European chart of local autonomy. And then uh, the second instrument of the Council of Europe would be uh, fact-finding missions where the officials will come and document themselves on the ground regarding the terrible and dreadful situation uh, in relation to the local officials. I have to say for the uh, um, Western European audience uh, that I am representing here a party that has significant representation at the local level in Moldova. Uh, our party has the most number of uh, mayors of towns, 12 out of 30. But here we are representing over 1,000 local officials who face uh, persecution, who, may, who face harassment on politically motivated grounds on behalf of what we call the not only the leader or the boss of a mafia-type regime in Moldova, but uh, Plachotnyuk virtually owns the Moldovan state, like you own the tie, he owns the state. But in fact, he has always denied being a member of the, uh, what is it, Solskjaer <laughs> Brotherhood. The, oh, the, don't, please the, don't talk, because I have to say directly to the viewers that uh, Renato Usate, the leader of our party, or any of my colleagues, we did not have any criminal offense until we got into politics. But most importantly with Renato Usate, the uh, regime started pressing criminal charges on him as soon as he started to become politically important and his rating grew up. Uh, so he ended up with over 20 criminal charges. Of course, all of them are fabricated. Um, what sort of charges? What sort of things is he accused of by the authorities? Okay, um, one probably ridiculous charge would be an, a fake one where they took the Facebook picture of Usati and of our colleague Nikolai Tsipovic and on the basis of it they fabricated a dossier where allegedly Usati and Tsipovic would plan the assassination of Moldovan police chief, okay? And on the basis of this, my colleague Nikolai Tsipovic was arrested. He spent four months in jail. Of course, that case collapsed in the court of law and my colleague was released. But for you, just for your uh, viewers to understand the ri ridiculous criminal charges pressed and the idea, the, the strategy of a mafia type regime in Moldova is that they open, press a criminal charge, of course fabricated. You go to the court of law and you prove that uh, it's fake, but follow up, they see that it's going to collapse and they open new ones. 
they press new ones. And likewise, I mean, you can go for years and for months and you can hire lawyers, but it's the uh, criminal nature of a regime to use state institutions against your own citizens. And this is what's happening in Moldova. Uh, and uh, Usate in our party has become the target, the political target of Plakotnuk regime, because Usate has been public and courageously uh, talking about the corruption of the regime publicly. Uh, by the way, he for the first time talked about the uh, threat of a billion dollar flat of uh, uh, theft from the Moldovan banks. Uh, Usate publicly talked how uh, Plakotnuk and his companion Shore were changing the shareholders of offshore companies involved in the billion dollar theft uh, to replace them with citizens from Lugansk and, uh, and Donetsk so as to wipe out the traces that they are the real crooks. We, we, we have to point out though that he, ha that, uh, the, the, he has not actually been uh, tried for this. Mr. Plahot uh, has, has, not, uh, has not actually been um, put on trial for this and it, the, the allegations have not been proved, have they? Oh, look, this is a captive state. It's a term coined by Secretary Yagland for Moldova in the New York Times editorial. And this means uh, a captured state means that the constitutional decisions are not taken within the constitutional framework, but outside in Plakotnuk's hotel. And the state institutions are concentrated uh, into his hands and, his, and, and these institutions serve their interests rather than the public good. That's, this is the essence of a captive state in the Republic of Moldova. But of course, against Plachetniuk have been brought millions uh, of accusations and, and solid evidence, very much of it, Renato Usate. And of course, in a, in a functional state, you would expect the state institution to respond. But it's not the case, because these law enforcement institutions are under the political control of Plakotnuk. And you know, I have some sort of um, urge or call to the Western European media, please, please contact Renato Usate. That Usate has buckets of evidence against Plachotniuk that when placed into the Western media, it is going to simply explode. How much of this is all to do with this billion dollar um, embezzlement, or well, let's call it by its name, theft from the uh, economy of Moldova? You know, there was, I, I said it during the press conference, there was one European Union official in the Republic of Moldova. His reaction was likewise, how on earth it was possible to steal that much money in such a small country. How? And of course, I mean, we all understand that this was the, the theft, the embezzlement, as you say, was done in group. It was, you know, practically impossible for only one individual. Now they put in jail Filat, Plachotniuk's companion, two years ago. Uh, and it is virtually impossible because we all understand the theft was conducted in group, like a pack of wolves. Uh, but um, the pub Moldovan public opinion well understands and well suspects Plachetniuk and his cronies being involved into this theft because we see the reluctance and unwillingness of uh, politically controlled law enforcement institutions to properly control, to properly investigate what they did, the government of Plachetniuk. They have adopted a law that transformed the theft into the public debt meaning for the t next 25 years, through taxes, the Moldovan citizens will actually pay the stolen money. Mr. Plahotniuk, uh, is, um, he, he's been accused of these sorts of things, but it, as I say, it hasn't been proved. Where has the money all gone? I mean, there are stories of it um, being put through um, front companies in Russia, ending up in the Cyprus banks, in Latvia, all over the place. But surely that amount of money, somebody would notice it being carried around the system. Look, uh, I think Usate has, it has said it time and again, uh, the Americans have um, proper mechanism and capacities to investigate if three or four dollars leave Moldova. So certainly the investigative bodies of other countries know where, how the money left from Moldova, who stolen them, and where did the money go. But uh, as far as I know, there has been no official request from the Moldovan authorities to FBI, for instance, uh, to help with the investigation. Uh, why? Because once again, the theft was conducted in group. And uh, if you 
uh, dig thoroughly into this crime, we may end up several hundred of Moldovan political representatives of a Moldovan political class to be thrown behind bars. Because in, in the West, it's often perceived that um, it, uh, Mr. Plahotnik is um, a, a pro-Western uh, person, he has a pro-Western party, and that your party is, is pro-Russian. And you, you said that East, these East-West tensions are being played up. But in fact, I, I was in Chisinau the day the government collapsed, the previous government collapsed, and there was a huge protest camp two, in fact, outside the Parliament building. One flying the European flag and being terribly pro-European, the other one with slogans against corruption in Cyrillic, clearly in Russian. So I mean, the idea, there is tension there, isn't there? And it, it may be being played on, but it does exist. Okay, the Western viewers should understand that uh, Plachotnyuk puts his geopolitical cap and basically tells the well, look, I am the beholder, I am the pillar of uh, pro-European values in the Republic of Moldova and I'm basically he is carrying the Europeans and the Americans that uh, you know uh, if I give up if I go then there is this real threat of the Russian tanks of Putin what in fact Pakhutnuk is doing is uh, speculating with geopolitics for his own benefits, just for him to be and his cronies to be able, number one, to embezzle the money from the Moldovan budget, and number two, to steal the European grants. With regard to Renato Usata, it's a propaganda in our party. He, uh, Plachatniuk to the Westerners, is presenting Usata as being the Moscow, the Kremlin's man, and the party being pro-Russian. That's wrong. And I stated clearly in my press conference that our party is a clearly pro-Moldova party, and we do prime such values as a functional state, rule of law, democracy, and human rights. And we are primarily in favor of strengthening Moldovan state institutions so that they function and they serve the citizen. And no matter who comes uh, and the alternation of power, they continue these institutions really strong to function and serve the public good. This is our position. With regard to geopolitics, because there are huge speculations and Moldova, unfortunately, continues to be a divided country upon geopolitical lines. But those who divide are the primary beneficiaries. They have a fifths, okay? Um, be it pro-Russian or pro-European, it means nothing because I gave you a clear example. Uh, neither Trump nor Putin will clean our streets and we have to collect the garbage. It's so, so, uh, it's just a simple matter. But it's so, so important that we do build these capacities. And by the way, we think our party that only a strong state can, for instance, uh, implement the project of, say, European integration. Because a weak blackmail state like that of Plakotnyuk is not capable of uh, implementing European Union reforms. Uh, they are discrediting the concept of European integration because an increasing number of Moldovan citizens are associate European, associating European integration with corruption, embezzlement of funds, irresponsible government, and so on and so forth, which in fact, European values, European integration means something else. It does mean uh, citizen welfare, functional state, rule of law, human rights, strong judiciary, and so on and so forth. Uh, see, the reality is different. But a lot of Moldovans that I've spoken to, in Kishino in particular, I don't know about out in the countryside because I didn't get that far, they, they have Romanian, they applied for Romanian passports so that they feel they're safe within the EU because they see Russian forces in Transnistria, for well, instance. Look, um, the phenomenon with Romanian passports in Moldova, um, many um, my fellow citizens, they applied for Romanian uh, passports just to as a tool to getting into the European Union to work in into the European Union because it was a means that would allow them to travel uh, but uh, the bulk of these people they are in favor of an independent and strong democratic Moldovan state they love uh, their country uh, and, uh, and, and this is it. Um, of course, there are other things that still continues to divide the Moldovan society and the state in addition to geopolitics. You all know it's the name of a language, it's the identity, it's the history, but, but uh, Renato Usate in our party comes with this consolidating approach. Moldova has been 
ethnically different and very much different during the Soviet period and way beyond. But um, it, it, it's very important that we consolidate and unite on the basis of citizenship. Uh, and that no matter how different we are, Orthodox Turks in the South, the Bulgarians, Russians, Moldovans, or Romanians, what not. So we all uh, are united under this umbrella of Moldovan citizenship. And then on this basis, we start building a democratic, prosperous, and functional Moldovan state. This is the approach of Renato Sate and our party. There, there are the neighborhood um, projects being uh, funded jointly by the Council of Europe and the European Union. And among the ones that are, I know are ongoing in Moldova are the efficiency of justice, to name one of them, and the building of a bar association. It would sound as if they're not actually working terribly well in that case. I'm not sure about the Moldovan Bar Association. I know they, they just uh, got a new fashionable building from the old one. Uh, I know there are problems with the law that uh, guides the activity of legal councils in the Republic of Moldova. But the general feeling, I know the bulk of money for the justice reform came from the European Union. Uh, and, I, um, and what we see, we see new courthouse buildings, uh, we see new furniture, we see new equipment the computer equipment, um, but uh, what we do not see, because we have political prisoners, okay, and, and when we go to protest ag against the illegalities of judges, politically controlled the prosecutors, you just bump into the flag of the European Union and it, it's something else. And in addition only to uh, renovating the courthouses, a, a lot of this money has been stolen in the Many of European Union officials are cognizant about this, that they were stolen by those in power. And that's a problem because um, the position of Renato Sate in our party is that the financial assistance coming from the European Union and Council of Europe, for instance, in lesser degree, but the European Union has this financial, strong financial tool. This money is for the citizens. It's not for the parties in power or the government. So, but it's a precondition to that is the government is not corrupt, that is transparent and likewise, with this mechanism, we can ensure that this money go. Uh, this money goes to the citizens. And by the way, uh, we I told you about the significant representation of a lo at the local level we have, and uh, we are a model. Our town halls or village halls that uh, they are corruption free, and whoever comes with a grant, it was a pledge to us, to, for the people, that uh, our mayors are not there for their own benefit or for the, the benefit of their kin or relatives, but they are there to improve the lives of the ordinary people. And when we are doing this with meager and small resources we are having, so that's, that's only one way forward, and I think this is consistent with the Council of European Values. Uh, what we do and what we have achieved at the local level in Moldova. Now, you've had a meeting with the um, Human Rights Commissioner here in Strasbourg. How hopeful are you that the Council of Europe has the powers, because it's not a powerful organisation, it's certainly not a rich organisation, how confident are you that it has the powers to in some way address the issues you have uh, and, and save Moldova, if you like, for to, to become okay, a democratic it, state? It, we came here because we think the problem we are facing uh, deals directly with the founding uh, values of this institution. Uh, we recognize, we acknowledge the fact that this is not a rich <laughs> institution, but we didn't come to ask for money. Uh, we came to solicit uh, the Council of Europe to use its uh, conventional rudimentary instruments and tools so that it can intervene. And these tools are um, concise, reports, specialized reports, fact-finding missions, monitoring missions, uh, and, 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 and with these tools, I mean, we can change things. Of course, uh, the situation cannot be altered overnight. We cannot expect miracles, but at least we have established this vibrant channel of communication. We are supplying in real time uh, the Council of Europe authorities with uh, the documents and, uh, um, and materials so that they can have all the information at hand to take decisions. And uh, the Commission for Human Rights, the Congress of Local and Regional Authorities, they did pledge fact-finding meetings. Uh, and of course, we will take them uh, to these city halls and town halls that are problematic, that are under pressure, that are suffering, so that they 
can uh, learn firsthand what we're talking about. Um, and there's going to be a specialized report by the Council of Regional and Local Authorities on how uh, the situation of these city halls and local authorities are violating the European Charter of Local Autonomy, and that's, that, that's something very important. So uh, uh, it was very important for us to knock the doors and, and to elegantly and uh, persuasively present our case, inform the officials, and this, is, this was our goal, and we think we largely achieved it. Elian Kashu, thank you very much indeed, and good luck. I thank you as well. It was a pleasure. Thank you.